Welcome to the Market Research Podcast that earned recognition in 2019 and again in 2020 in being named one of the very best in the marketing research field. This is Research Business Daily Report, our video cast or video podcast, whatever you'd like to call it. Nonetheless, it's a service that is delivered the top research news day by day, Monday through Thursday, most weeks since its inception in February 2012. And it is recognized today as the research industry's only daily research video report. So enjoy today's video and any of our other reports which you can find online. But please lend your support for this research news video series. You can see on the screen to your right exactly where you can go online to do that. My name is Bob Letterer and I'm in my 26 years, the respected voice in market research. Without exception, every research agency can vividly remember how its business crashed and burned in the first few months after the coronavirus hit last March. Craig and Ashley Cunningham were like everyone else, based in Arkansas, and they saw their mall-focused interviewing and data collection operations that move and work across 38 states come to an abrupt halt. But not long thereafter, they actually received some ideas about how to pick up and continue their business from the managers of many of the malls that they operate out of. Curbside interviewing outside those malls was one of the first ideas that came to pass. Not far behind was home delivery of CNC customer samples so that research reactions could be collected from people out of their homes. And then CNC's distribution center took on added importance. CNC's Cunningham pair will tell you today about all sorts of things that they thought about and worked through, but I'm going to let Craig and Ashley tell you more about those innovative COVID solutions and, happily, CNC's improving results. With um, the curbside delivery, which was very popular in the shopping malls across America that were trying to stay in business during that time. So, so we hopped on the, uh, the bus and we did the same. We had a lot of products that we were currently testing that had shelf lives. So we had to get those out the door. We had to deliver the research or the product was, would be ruined. It came from the mall developers originally from the big box stores, you know, that everybody was doing curbside and we just got on board. We started with, uh, you know, back to our, our base as uh, um, door to door. You know, we contacted them through our community panels that we build from each mall location throughout the years. We recruited people um, that were in our database mm -hmm. and um, asked if we could drop products off or come interview them outside in their yard. Or, and that's basically how we, how we mm -hmm. got by. Project sizes changed a little bit, I would say. Um, they probably got smaller because it, it turned into a pre-recruit instead of it being a mall, a mall intercept. Mm -hmm. So they changed in size, but also you also kind of had more of a more in-depth kind of interview with everything because the methodology changed, the timing on the product changed, um, especially for like these home use placements. So you were getting more um, time out of these respondents because they were at home longer to use this product. So diaries were longer, um, follow-ups with them were longer. Um, so the project size, the sample size might've changed, but the quality of the, of the project probably increased a little bit. Well, 2020 took off. I mean, it was great in January, February, and half of March. Mm -hmm. uh, and, then, and then it hit us, you know, um, and we were, pretty much dead in the water other than finishing up products that are projects that were in the field for about a month and a half to two months. Mm -hmm. And then the new methodologies came around, the curbsides came around uh, and we picked right back up where we left off. And, you know, since the vaccine has come out, uh, we see an increase in business every, every month. We saw when the pandemic hit that clients had a lot of product that they were holding and they needed a place to store it. Um, they didn't know when they were going to be back into their facilities 
and we didn't know when we were going to be back into ours. So with us being in Arkansas, we had this large office building. Uh, downstairs, we had about 4,000 square feet that we could utilize. And so we started having products being shipped here and being held here. Uh, we would get a project, we would recruit it, and we would um, become just a distribution center. We would send the product directly to the respondent because some of our offices weren't open and, and working yet. So um, all of our staff was working from home, really. And um, here in Arkansas, we weren't really affected that much at, at that time. Yeah. So we were kind of business as normal here with, um, you know, wearing masks and social distancing. Those were our kind of precautions that we put in place. So we utilized our space down there to send out product nonstop to, for all of our clients to, to get their projects still going during this kind of unpre unprecedented time where we didn't know who was going to be open and who was going to be closed, but we could get that product to the respondent. I think, you know, pre-recruiting, we encourage that, you know, uh, Mall Intercept is on the comeback. We see each month, we see, a little, you know, more people than the following month is foot traffic, as so our leasing reps tell us. One more thing that will be a challenge is, is to, to rebuild our workforce. You know, I mean, we never laid off our salaried people. We kept them on all the time. But hourly people, when we didn't have work, we didn't give them hours. So, you know, it's we're rebuilding right now. It, every week, you know, there's 15 or 20 new hires. So that's going to be the big challenge moving forward. Our hourly wages have gone up quite a bit, you know, and they're continuing to go up. And it's structured that way through the government as well. It's just the, the um, supply and demand. That wraps up today's edition of the Research Business Daily Report. Now, we'd like to ask you for a small favor before you leave us today. We've been nominated to compete with numerous other market research podcasts in a competition. It's the 2021 Marketing Research Podcast of the Year. If you look at the description box directly under today's video, you can see a link that you can click on that will take you to a page where you can cast your vote. Voting is open until Tuesday, August the 31st. So please do so as soon as you can, maybe even right now. And as I said yesterday, well, I don't know if you can vote more than once. If you can, who am I to say no? Thank you for viewing today's RBDR video. We hope that you appreciate the work we do sufficiently to consider becoming an RBDR Patreon supporter so that we can continue what we think is an excellent news service. You can do, visit RBDR's exclusive crowdfunding platform at patreon.com slash RBDR to do that. We hope that you have a good research day and that we'll be looking forward to seeing you again here tomorrow. And whenever you get back to us, please stay safe.